I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about integration by parts. In problem number 39, we'd like to find the volume of the solid that is generated when the region bounded by f of x equals e to the minus x, x equals ln of 2, and the coordinate axes is revolved about the y-axis. So first thing here, let's get a feel for what we're doing. Let's draw a picture of our region. So first of all, we have f of x equals e to the negative x. So this is f of x equals e to the minus x. Uh, we have x equals ln2, which is some vertical line. This is x equals ln of 2. And then the two axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. So we can see what is trapped between all of those is this region. And then we say, let's revolve that region around the y-axis. If I do revolve around the y-axis, then the shape that I get looks something like this. Something like that. All right, so here's my shape, uh, and that's the um, object that I'd like to find the volume of. All right, so what I'm going to look at here is I see right now I want to make cuts that look like this. And those cuts are cutting up the x-axis. So what that tells me is when I make slices and they cut up the x-axis, then I'm going to integrate this thing with respect to x. So I'm integrating from an x-value to an x-value of x stuff dx. Okay. So now that I know that, then I am going to say, let's just take a typical cut. Here's a cut at x. When I spin that cut, around the y-axis, I get something that looks like this, which we see is a cylindrical shell. So when I take the cut that I want to make and I spin it around my axis, I either get a disc, washer, or shell, and that tells me exactly what I want to use. So in this case, I want to use shells. So my volume is going to equal the integral from A to B. Well, where do I start my slicing and where do I end my slicing? I start the slicing at zero and I end my slicing at ln of two. Then the formula for shells is two pi RH. So I get two pi, the radius at X. So this shell at X, what is the radius of that shell? Well the radius is x. So I have 2 pi radius, and then I need h, the height of the shell. Well, the height of the shell, I set this up so that the height of the shell is just the functional value f of x. And in this case, f of x is e to the minus x. So this is e to the minus x dx. In other words, we have integral from a to b of 2 pi r h dx, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so now that we have this thing set up, we need to integrate it. And the way we're going to integrate it is we're going to integrate by parts because I see I have an x e to the minus x. I know how to take the derivative of x. I know how to take the antiderivative of e to the negative x. So let's do it. Uh, also, I can move the 2 pi outside and that may be as helpful uh, just to get the 2 pi out of the way. So let's rewrite this. This is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to ln2 of x e to the negative x dx. And now I'm ready to set up my u value and my dv value to integrate this thing by parts. So uh, I get a u value, I get a dv. For u, I want to make this thing simple as I take a derivative, so I'll set x as my u, and for my dv, I'll make that e to the minus x, dx. So du is equal to dx, and v 
is equal to negative e to the negative x. And now I'm ready to rewrite this integral using integration by parts. Okay, I'm kind of running out of room here, so let's move over here. Okay, so let's rewrite this guy using integration by parts. I still have my 2 pi, uh, and then I'm going to have times that integral. But I'm going to rewrite this integral as u times v, so that's negative x e to the negative x, and remember I need to evaluate that now from 0 to ln of 2, evaluated from 0 to ln 2, minus integral from 0 to ln of 2 of v times du. v is negative e to the negative x, du is dx, so I get negative e to the negative x dx. And now I can close my parentheses. All right, so we've got this thing set up. I still need to take an integral. Uh, notice that I have a negative integral and a negative inside. The negatives cancel. I think I'll just do that right now. I'll just make these pluses, and now we're ready to go. So what is this equal to? I still have 2 pi on the outside. On the inside, I have negative x e to the minus x evaluated from 0 to ln of 2 plus the antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x evaluated from 0 to ln of 2. And I can close parentheses. All right, let's start plugging things in. I get 2 pi times. If I plug in ln of 2, I get negative ln 2 e to the minus ln of 2. So let's see what that gives us. I get minus ln of 2 times e to the negative ln of 2. Now this is something that we've done quite a bit of times and so we should be getting pretty familiar with what we do here. Minus ln of 2 is the same as ln of 2 to the minus 1. So that's ln of a half. So e to the ln of a half is 1 half. So if I plug in ln of 2 for x here, I get e to the minus ln of 2, which is otherwise known as 1 half. Minus, if I plug in 0 here, I get 0 e to the negative 0, which is just 0. Okay, so that's, if I plug in ln of 2, I get this guy. If I plug in 0, I get 0. Plus, plug in ln of 2, and I get negative e to the negative ln of 2. So that's negative 1 half. And if I plug in 0 minus, plug in 0 and I get e to the 0, which is 1, so it's minus 1. And one more parentheses. Okay, so what is this? I get 2 pi um, times. This is just minus ln 2 times a half. Uh, then I get minus a half plus one. Minus a half plus one, of course, is just plus a half. So I get two pi uh, times negative ln of two times a half uh, plus one half. And I suppose there are many ways that I could write this. Notice that the two and the twos on bottom here cancel. And I could just write this as pi times uh, negative ln of two could also be written as ln of one half, if you like, uh, plus one. And that is the answer for how much volume that shape has.